Okay, uh, welcome back to part one. Um, in this video what we're going to be doing is going over the files that we're using, the file structure, the folders and all that. Um, and then we're going to be getting on with coding the basic file list, which was this page here. Um, so I guess the first thing we should do is look at the folder. So this is it. We've got these two pages. One of them is actually a page, the file list, which is what you just saw in the browser. And the other one is download.php. And this isn't technically a page, but it works in the same way, as in the browser visits it and it downloads a file. Um, and that's what I demonstrated uh, previously. And then we've got this core folder, which is pretty much the same as I always use. So let's just take a quick look through that. Um, so what we've got inside of here is this init.inc.php file. And as usual, that is what sort of does all the initial setups type stuff. So if you were using some sort of login system, that would start the session, because you'd probably need a session for logins. Um, and sort of anything like that. So this is in, in this video, or in this, you know, this code, all it does is basically include a library file. So nothing too complicated, but um, I will be showing you that in a moment. Um, and then we've got this htaccess file, .htaccess, um, and what that does is it stops the browser looking in this folder. So if we just go to, well, I'll be coding, well, I'll show you what to put that in, it, put in that in a moment, but um, the reason is that you want to stop the user directly browsing to this files folder. Um, and the files folder contains all the files in the system. So if I just open that up, you can see that we've got you know, all of these files, and these are the ones that were shown on that list. Um, so you don't want the user to browse directly to this folder, otherwise they'd just be able to download it directly without going through your speed limiting code. Um, so yeah, that's why we're doing that. And then again, as always, we've got this ink folder, which just contains any library files or sort of backend function type files that we might need. Um, and in here we've just got this thing, single one called files. Um, and what this is going to do is just uh, define a few functions which we're going to use to make our life a little bit easier. So, let's uh, get on with making the main list. So, like I said, first thing we need to do is make sure that people can't access this core folder directly. So if I just go to my browser for now and just change this here to slash core, you can see that we get the list of files. And I can go into this files folder and download any of these directly if I want to. So the way to get around this, or the way to fix this, is using the htaccess file and if I just go into it here, so this is the file that's located in the core folder, this one, and you just add one line which is deny from all. What that will do is tell the web server not to accept any requests made for this you know this folder. So hitting reload you can see we get you do, you do not have permission to access this folder. And that'll be true for any of the files as well. So that just prevents people downloading the files directly which is good. So now what we need to do is code the actual pages. Um, this is just shown up because it was in my history, by the way. If I hit refresh, it'll just go forbidden. So yeah. Um, so we need to act, what, we do, what we need to do now is code the actual page here. So the first thing we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to create a function which is going to return some information on all the files within the system. And then we're going to use that to create our page. So I'm going to go to the files backend file and I'm going to create a... well, I'm going to create two functions, but for, for now let's just create one and we'll call this fetch files and what it's going to do is just return a list of all of the files. So what this uh, function needs to do is search the files folder and to do that it needs to know the path to the files folder and to do that it needs to know the location on the server that the whole system is in. Um, and so we're going to be using the core path variable I always define and that's defined in the init file, which you can see here. So we've got this core path variable, and again, that is literally, I do this in pretty much every PHP tutorial, so just go back and have a look at some of my others if you don't know what I'm doing. But essentially, what that does is just work out the location of the um, current folder, basically. So if we look at the path at the top here, this dir name, dir name, file, constant, will return um, this whole part here up to core. It won't include the file name. And then we can use that, as I've done here, to include files relative to this core folder but without having to use relative paths, just because they usually go wrong. So yeah. So then what we can do is use this to work out the location of the files folder. So going back to our function, what we can do is use the glob function. I'm pretty sure that's got a proper name, but glob. Um, <laughs> what this does is it searches for files and the way it searches is you give it a path with a sort of missing part which you indicate by a star character 
and it will return any matches that fit that you know where the star is replaced by anything at all so you can get all the files in a, in a given folder by doing blob of the core path which we need to access via the globals array because it's not in the current scope just meaning it's not defined in the function which means that this function can't technically see it and then from the core path or from the core folder we want the files folder and then we want any file okay so now if I just did say print underscore r of this and obviously we need to call this function so we can test it so I'm going to go to our file list page and just in this PHP block here I'm going to call a function like so and then let's hit reload in our browser window and you can see we get this big mess of text if we just view the page source and bring it down that looks a bit smaller and you can see that we have the list of file names or file paths technically that we have in this folder so instead of returning this horrible list we're going to return an array of arrays um, which is going to contain information on each file so let's go ahead and do that so let's just go back to our function um, here and then instead of just printing out the list of files we're going to loop over it so we're going to do for each glob as file and that will just be the file path so equally we could just do echo file here and that would print out the each file path in turn however we don't want to do that we want to use the file path in some way and we're going to be adding um, information on each file into an array that we're then going to return so what we need to do is define the array before we can add stuff to it so we're just going to create a new array up here like so and then down here we're going to return that array like so except let's spell return correctly there we go um, it, you don't actually have to do this I know some people are probably going to comment that and say you're doing it wrong but I'm not well I am but I'm not also I'm not <laughs> um, yeah so the reason we're defining it here is if there are no files and you create the array dynamically inside of here when you get to this return statement you'll get an error because files isn't defined it makes more sense to return an empty array which is why we define it beforehand so yeah anyway inside of this loop what we want to do is add an element to this files array containing information on this specific file so we can add to the array just by using this and what we're going to be adding is actually another array and it's going to contain two elements one being the name of the file and one being the size of the file obviously you can add as many of these as you like but um, for now I'm just going with name and size and to get the name we use the base name function which just returns the file name portion of a file path because remember when I printed them all out there was a list of paths it had the whole folder path in it um, so we just want the end of that which is the result of this base name thing and we just use file there which is the file path and to get the file size, we can just use file size, which just gets the file size of a file path. Simple. So, if we just go back to our file list page now and wrap this in a print underscore r, like so, and hit reload, you can see we get some different information. I'll just view the page source again to make it a little bit more clear. So, you can see that now for every file, we have an entry in this array, like so. This is one of them this is another one and each one contains the file name and the file size in bytes and that's going to be needed later on um, if you wanted some other stuff like the file type you could easily get that but um, yeah so now that we've got that what we're going to do is actually create the file list page that we can, so that we can close the file basically because all this needs to do is print a link more or less so what we're going to do is just go back to our file list code and we are going to just loop over this instead of printing it out directly so we're going to do for each as file so for each of the files we're going to do some HTML so I'm going to exit out of PHP and then go back into it a little bit down and we're going to have a div tag just to make sure they go in new lines and we're just going to have a simple link to link to the download page which is download.php and we're going to pass in the file name in the get variable which is going to be called file and then we're just going to use PHP again here to output the file name like so and that's the end of the link and then we need it again here to you know, have something to see that you can click on and 
and there we go that's that done so if we just quickly go back to the page again hit reload you can now see that we have this list of links and uh, if I just for example click on this large file you can see that we go to the downloads page um, and actually I've missed an equals out there so that should have an equals in it so let's just go back and fix that uh, that there should have an equals All right for typos okay so one more reload and now you can see we're on file equals large file so the next thing we need to do is actually have the downloads page download the file which seems fairly obvious so I think we'll probably do that in the next part because if we don't this is going to get slightly too long so as usual thank you for watching and come back for part two where we'll do the thing that I just said we'll do <laughs>